A very good morning once again and many thanks for staying with us right here on the number one TV station in the country, NTV Uganda. My name is Romy Busiku and of course I come to you yet again with another pertinent conversation, largely focusing on the COVID-19 pandemic that is still pretty much rearing its very ugly head. On the international scene, there is a clear uptick in the number of infections that are being registered. You wouldn't believe that 248 million and some 200,000 infections have been registered in that regard. The good news pertains to the fact that 224.9 million actually pulled through or recovered from this heinous pandemic COVID-19. The unlucky ones total up to 5 million and some 29,000 people who actually succumbed or were killed by this heinous disease COVID-19. The situation is a bit different right here in Uganda. Some 126,272 cases of COVID-19 were registered. Those are the infections and out of that number, 97,727 people actually recovered or pulled through and survived the heinous pandemic. COVID-19. 300, 217 were unlucky. They died. They succumbed. They were killed by the heinous disease COVID-19. Well, communicable diseases have been killing people this year. When you hear 5 million, that's only part of the bad news. 10 million people have been killed as a result of communicable diseases. COVID-19 is one of those communicable diseases. Ebola is one of those communicable diseases. Hepatitis A, B are one or part of those communicable diseases. But then the, the biggest killer disease this year has been COVID-19. But even in the light of this ravaging pandemic, we still want to front messages of hope on what needs to be done as far as adherence to the SOPs is concerned. Many people should be clamoring for the vaccinations. They are the magic or silver lining that we need to ensure normalcy returns to the various jurisdictions that have been ravaged by this COVID-19 pandemic. Why are people not clamoring for these vaccinations? In Uganda here, we've secured more than 10 million uh, vaccines, but only 3.1 million vaccinations have been undertaken within our country. Why have we been too slow to inoculate individuals, yet this is the magic bullet that we need to ensure that normalcy returns to our jurisdiction? Have we actually maximized on the use of the faith leaders to ensure that they call on or egg on members of the public to clamor for these vaccinations. That's a conversation that we are largely having right now, right here on NTV Uganda. COVID-19 and the messages of hope. What is the role of the faith leaders in helping us clamp down on this heinous pandemic COVID-19? In my midst, I have Atuhura Tadeo. He is the Communications and Partnerships Manager at Mount May Uganda. He is not alone. We are also joined by the Sheikh. <coughs> That is Sheikh Mulindwa. Um, Sheikh Mulindwa is the sh uh, is the caddy for Luero District, and Sheikh Mulindwa will be tasking us with some of the modalities surrounding the vaccinations. Why has it been too slow, and why has the rollout not actually been so bright or fruitful like we anticipated? Sheikh Mulindwa and also Tadeo Atuhura join me right now and right here on set. Very good morning, Tadeo and Sheikh Mulindwa. Good morning, Remy. <coughs> All right, uh, let's start with the objectives of the COVID-19 messages of hope. What are some of those objectives of this whole uh, awareness drive, COVID-19 messages of hope? Uh, thank you so much, Romeo. Uh, great morning to Ugandans. Mm. The special greetings from Malme, Uganda, Indeed. the center of excellency. Indeed, we reciprocate. Uh, mm. uh, with the, the, uh, with the, the hospital that we have, 24 hours hospital. Indeed. And then, of course, r research, training, and then also uh, changing lives of I should uh, be visiting one of these days. Please, There's you're most welcome, Romeo. I think one of these days you <laughs> should be able to come over uh, to because, Mount May Uganda. Because at the moment, I think um, vaccinations are working and everything else, but I could tell you that I've survived this COVID-19 pandemic because of God. I could be like David in the lion's den. Mm. You remember that story? Yes. yes. The lions did not touch him. So in this case, the lions are COVID-19 and Romeo Busiku is David. I'm telling you, God has put me through this heinous pandemic. But mm -hmm. for some other people, the 3,217 individuals, they did not actually survive. They were mm -hmm. never lucky. Because vaccinations right now are the magic bullet that we need. But people are not clamoring for them. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are here. COVID-19 messages of hope. How will that help us? Yes. So in, uh, first of all, we want to appreciate mm. the government efforts uh, the, through the Minister of Health, mm. but above all, the president of this country for having, first of all, led us so well. Mm. 
And uh, part of the successes that you're seeing there mm. in terms of the numbers going down is because of those efforts. Indeed. So Malme Uganda partners with uh, Minister of Health and of course we support from CDC and PEPFA Indeed. to ensure that we are able to um, orient and engage faith leaders in tackling the pandemic. Indeed. Where we are, we have had so many efforts that have been done in terms of ensuring that we have um, our people get the message of COVID-19. Mm. To date, uh, we still have um, people who still doubt that actually it's COVID-19. Uh, we still have people who say, can I get the vaccine or mm. not? Now, the COVID-19 messages of hope is uh, a model centered around engaging the faith leaders mm. to take this ma message to their followers. Mm. And here we're looking at, uh, at across the board. Mm. We're looking at uh, the Muslims, we're looking at the Anglicans, we're looking at Catholics. Adventists. Adventists, mm. we're looking at um, the Pentecostals, and we've had several orientations. Even in the born again faithful. Yes, yeah, um, the, and those fall under the, the, the Pentecostals mm. as well. Indeed. So we, we, we're looking at engaging them, orienting them, and then equipping them to be able mm. to carry on the message mm. about uh, hope, about life, about influence, and uh, here we're basically looking at, you know, the Romeo, most of our people, whether it is sadness mm. or happiness, they always run to their faith leaders. Mm. So they talk to them, they believe in them, because in them they see God's help. You have articulated very well that mm. God helped you. Indeed. But I will tell you that if I was coming with the same message here, and without a shake, for instance, mm. few people would it believe me. Be yes, <laughs> there will be few people. <laughs> but it, it, yes. it, it, engaging the faith leaders mm. who are on the ground and they live with them on a daily basis, I think it's going to give us a greater milestone mm. in terms of fighting this pandemic. Mm. But under that, we're looking at some key, key essentials. And here, we're talking about issues like influence. If you're talking about uh, wearing a mask, I'm putting on one, mm. and I know Sheikh has just removed his because mm. he's a distance from me, mm. Mm. but when he's back at the <coughs> mosque and he tells people about putting on the, the mask, mm. can they see him putting on the mask? Mm. Because if they don't see him putting on the mask, it means they're also not going to follow. Mm. You need to walk the talk. Mm. Mm. So if you're going to wash, say, wash your hands, they should be able to see that. If they say, no, Sheikh has told us we mm. should keep social distance, they should be able to see that actually Sheikh is keeping mm. the social distance. Indeed. Talk about vaccination. Uh, today, you've just uh, highlighted the mm. statistics as mm. far as vaccination is concerned. Indeed. And we've had so many stories related to vaccines. They are bad, they are this, they are chimps, they are what? I have been vaccinated. Mm. Uh, mm. My two jabs, mm. uh, uh, my two doses are, are done. No uh, reactions whatsoever. No reactions whatsoever, and I continue with my work normally. Mm. My wife is vaccinated, and the, the rest of my colleagues are also vaccinated, mm. and we have not had any issues. Mm. So uh, the, there's a the lot of talk that the vaccines are bad, mm. or what. that is just hearsay. Mm. But also it's very fundamental for us to engage the faith leaders to mm. carry this message so that our people are able to know that actually they're authentic. Mm. The other day we had uh, a vaccination at Sheikh's place, mm. and he was also vaccinated. Indeed, on Monday, he's going to let us in on that. Yeah, yes. so the, the COVID-19 messages of hope is more of how can we work with our faith leaders to contribute towards the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Because individuals out there believe the faith leaders more than our politicians, whom they think are making the COVID-19 pandemic a money-minting machine just simply to enrich themselves. And which is largely not true, because many people are using that as a reason to justify talk that COVID-19 is a hoax. And largely that is not true. People are dying. Yeah, yeah, people mm. are dying. I wouldn't uh, say that the politicians are riding on that. Indeed. But the, the, the whole perspective is that I come from the health institution, mm. from the health background. What we are seeing is that if we get people vaccinated, mm. and this is not just about um, propaganda, mm. no. When people get vaccinated, science has proven mm. that actually it is able to, to save them from the severity of this pandemic mm. in the case they fall sick. But also the other perspective is that we need to be able to now, Romeo, it's a time, it's about two and a half years. Mm. People have, have gotten uh, back to the communities, they have gotten COVID and have healed and back in the communities. <coughs> we don't need to stigmatize them. Mm. So once they have come, we should be able to live with them, encouraging them, mm. loving them, mm. so that they feel that they are part and partial of the community. Mm. So 
part of the COVID-19 messages of hope is also to look at that. Do our that, stigmatizing yes. of former victims. And the people who lead this example so well are the faith leaders. Indeed. Let's also bring in the faith leader within our midst. Yes, that is Sheikh Ramadan Molindo. He is the district Kadi for Luero district. Like uh, mm -hmm. Tadewo Atuhura did mention in his preamble. Yes, there was a vaccination exercise in his mm -hmm. premises. And also he got his jab on Monday mm -hmm. this very week. He did suffer from COVID-19. That was on mm -hmm. September of 2020, but he did pull through. He's going to be giving us details of that mm -hmm. encounter. A very good morning once again, Sheikh Ramadan Molindo. Mm -hmm. A very yes. good morning to our Give viewers. Give us an account of what really happened. A very good morning to our viewers, mm -hmm. and um, I bring to you greetings from Luero Muslim District. I'm very glad to be hosted here today at the NTV, the number one television. Indeed. Uh, I, I want to thank Mr. Romeo and uh, my brother Tadeo mm -hmm. uh, for bringing on uh, this uh, program. Indeed. Because uh, a lot of our people, uh, they need such sensitizations. Yes. by faith leaders, by politicians, mm -hmm. but uh, at least today we are on board Indeed. Uh, as religious leaders to carry on the mantle and the uh, message of hopes to our people. Uh, first of all, uh, I would also want to thank the 200 imams that turned, the, turned up yesterday for vaccination. Mm. Uh, it was a very peaceful uh, gesture mm. exactly. and, and our people uh, were vaccinated. In fact, we were targeting 200 imams, but surprisingly, uh, almost 300 people turned up for the, for, for the, for the call. Mm. So uh, I see as our role as religious leaders uh, to carry on the call to action to vaccinate. Mm. Uh, our people uh, need to know uh, the ethics and uh, the role of their religious mm. leaders within their communities. Mm. Uh, Break down those roles. Uh, the roles of the religious leaders is to mm. call to action to people to go for vaccinations, to, to, to give the messages of hopes uh, to our people. They are those who have been uh, uh, sick with the pandemic. Mm. They got contaminated with the COVID-19. Mm. And they are those who have recovered. Mm. All these people, they need uh, conciliation and they need... Uh, uh, sensitization, they need uh, to be uh, welcomed back to the community. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of our roles is to observe the SOPs also in our faith uh, places uh, to ensure that the, 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 the mosques, the churches, uh, they, they stick to the SOPs and guidelines put, put in place by the government. Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, I also want to celebrate our gallant uh, uh, frontline workers, mm -hmm. such as the doctors, uh, the government leaders, who have been on the front line since the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. uh, as the Royal Muslim District yesterday, uh, we had a 200 imams sensitization uh, with Madme Uganda. We also mm -hmm. want to thank Madme Uganda for being there for us. Mm. Uh, first of all, they called us as religious leaders at uh, Nico, Nikel Hotel for sensitization. All the district cadres, the county sheikhs within the uh, Mubende region, mm. we are sensitized about the COVID-19, how to disseminate the information mm. of COVID-19 to our people, because most of our people, they are misinformed. They, ha they hear a lot of uh, information, false information from people. What kind of false stories do they have? The false stories they have, uh, such as that the, the vaccines are not real. Uh, when you take one, you, you get paralyzed. I took mine yesterday, <laughs> but I'm very okay. You're very okay. I'm very okay, and uh, I'm very relaxed. I don't, I don't have any side effect. Hmm. So my call to, to, to our viewers, please, uh, when the national ID came in, hmm to go to get the national ID. Mm. People relax a lot. But today, if you want to go to get the national ID, it will take you a, a lot of time and even money. Mm. But it was for free. Uh, the vaccination card is going to be like the national ID very soon. Corruption is going to take off. That to, uh, to, to enter a taxi, you should have a vaccination card. We are coming there. We are going there. To enter a banker, you have to, ha to cut on your uh, vaccination card. So. I, I call upon our people, our viewers, to go for vaccinations. First of all, the vaccination, the vaccinations, the vaccines are free. Mm. They are real. Uh, they have no any side effect. Like you get pitched by a nail, maybe you get pitched, pitched by a nail. Mm. Uh, you feel the pain of that uh, nail. Mm. 
when it pitches you. So the same way you will have uh, that pain of the needle, uh, which has been put in, uh, in, in you when Very they are, lived, uh, yeah, for a short limited of time. Mm -hmm. And we always have our children who, who, who we take for vaccination. Uh, they come up with temperature. We know what we give them. The precautions are, are given by the doctors. Please, when he, he, his temperature rises, give him uh, a coat of uh, Panadol and what of you. Mm -hmm. So these here says they are first informations. Mm -hmm. People should go for vaccination in, ma in big numbers uh, because the vaccines are there and they are free of charge. Mm. Anytime from now, they will be uh, uh, for money. Mm. And, and uh, the, the dealers will, will come in and ask a very big amount of money for, for someone to get a vaccination. Mm. Now, the messages of hope we have as religious leaders, uh, this is our collective responsibility mm. as religious leaders of any uh, faith organization, be it the Muslim faith or uh, the non-Muslims faith, it is our responsibility to sensitize our people first. Indeed, and, and Nation Media Group, since the onslaught of this COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic, has mm -hmm. always touted the significance of actually involving faithful faith leaders to actually mm -hmm. help us in, you know, assuring the public or persuading them mm -hmm. to adhere to the SOPs. But mm -hmm. largely what we've been seeing are politicians taking over and so forth. Do you think largely would have seen more vaccinations taking center stage if the faith leaders had been involved from the onset of the onslaught of this pandemic, Tadeo? Mm. Yeah, I think just like any other pandemic mm. that breaks out, mm. they are starting points. I wouldn't want to say that they are they'd late to engage the, the faith leaders. Mm. Mm. They were engaged, but you see the biggest part of where do we start from? Mm. And you remember when we started saying that no, essentials first stay. Mm. Uh, you, you, you're going to, the rest can be a home, but essentials mm. go. So it's a decision that mm. you take when a pandemic breaks mm. out. But I will tell you ultimately that it's the right and opportune time mm. that the faith leaders are able to join this fight. Why? Mm. As we talk right now, which is right, we have got opening up of uh, pr uh, prayers of worship. Mm -hmm. They are allowing 200 um, worshippers to join and, mm -hmm. and, and pray together. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the time uh, when the, the faith leaders can cut off the message. Mm -hmm. But we would like to applaud them as well. That even in the start, mm -hmm. they kept on informing people that, look, this is COVID-19. It is real. Please make sure that you are following government guidelines, mm. the SOPs and all that. Mm -hmm. What we have seen with the engagement with our faith leaders, Sheikh has just talked about the mm. event that we, we had on Monday. Mm. You'd see that people are coming because their leader has said, come. And then he gets vaccinated. And then everyone is actually saying, let me also take the vaccine. Mm. But also the other perspective that we have, there is a counseling that he has talked about. Mm. With the COVID-19, beyond just the medical care, there are other things that have come in. Uh, some people have lost jobs, mm. others have lost their dear ones. Mm. The children are at home. Mm. Businesses and are not moving. Yeah, business, mm. Yes, so it needs that kind of counseling and handling and from the, the perspective of that things will get yes, better to we'll say that with the pandemic when a child uh, walks to you and return. says that when am i going to school mm. Mm. you don't have to bark at them mm. but there is a way how we need to be able to treat them and they understand mm. that why i am actually at home is because there is a pandemic and it's it's okay for me to be here Indeed. because things will change now government is saying we shall reopen in well january of 2022 mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. or not they achieve the 7 to 12 million vaccination target mm -hmm. but then don't you think they will be discarding their responsibility because president is saying the onus or the responsibility in case there's another outbreak of a third wave the responsibility is on the citizens because they are not clamoring for these vaccinations mm -hmm. now don't you think given the mandate of government, don't you think they will be discarding their responsibility of taking care of uh, the people of this country? In the first wave, they did the same. They mm. reopened, but said the onus is on you as citizens to man your own protection. People died. Mm. Many, many people died. There were mm. body bags everywhere. Are we not preparing ourselves for the same? We reopen. no vaccinations have been taken center stage at the target that we are looking for. Then people start dying, and then we go back to a lockdown. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, uh, Romeo, you raised something very fundamental. Indeed. And fundamental from the to, uh, actual perspective of uh, people's personal responsibility. Mm. Now, I want to really applaud government mm. for having come out seriously and given us all the information that we need. Indeed. Great appreciation to the ministry leadership Indeed. for making sure that everything is everywhere. Mm. You have the information, you have everything. Mm. The other aspect is that, Romeo, mm. sometimes you need to have people take a personal decision. I see. 
I will tell you, um, the, we have, I think Sheikh has talked about Laxte. Indeed. Uh, uh, where you say, I think it's, I will go, I will go with the time. Until when hmm. it has become really something that is a priority for you. When you want to travel and then they ask you for the, uh, uh, for, uh, for the vaccination card, card mm. and you don't have it. Now that because you want to travel, mm. then you need to go and take the, 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 the job. Mm. But here we're talking about life. And I think the president was talking from that perspective mm. that, look, the information is here. Mm. The centers have all been opened up for vaccination. And this is why I would like to request that even with the faith leaders, mm. as who have opened up, it could be at the mosque. There could be an organization maybe with the local district mm. set up that they come and vaccinate people have come to pray Juma mm. on that day. Mm. They are vaccinated and they go back home. So that we also have a uh, few people walking long distances. Mm. But also at churches, they can be able to organize and then get people vaccinated. Mm. But the responsibility of getting vaccinated, Romeo, mm. it's for Tadeo to move and get vaccinated. And then ask another question. Mm. In my home, who else needs to be vaccinated? Indeed. So that uh, we, we make this as a collective responsibility. Mm. Romeo, when you take your family for vaccination, Indeed. I take my family, mm. she takes these people who have been vaccinated. Indeed. It reduces the number of those that actually would want to be vaccinated. Mm. So at one point, you have the vehicle, you have to move it. So if government has provided us that mm. vehicle, it's us now to move it and make sure that we take responsibility. Indeed. But also the other thing that, uh, Romeo, you, uh, uh, you, you, you pointed out yeah. is that beyond the vaccination, we also need to follow the standard operating procedures. Um, the, I've seen situations whereby somebody um, they goes in the taxi, for mm. instance, and sees that actually people are not putting on masks, mm. and he's not telling them. It's the responsibility of the driver mm. or the conductor to say, mm -mm, please put on your mask. It's also a responsibility for, uh, for Romeo mm. to say, I'm going for this meeting, but I've realized mm. there are many people here. Can we do social distance? For the taxi touts or the conductors, the mask is always on the chin. I've seen that happen one too many times. <laughs> yeah, but also sometimes it's also good to remind. <laughs> I've seen situations mm. whereby when you remind and say, oh, oh, how, please uh, put on your mask. Says, oh, mm. okay, okay, let me put it on, mm. you know? But that responsibility it has to be personal. Mm -hmm. Person, uh, respect the standard operating procedures, mm. sanitizing. I'm so happy with the NTV. Mm. Actually, even when you look at um, mm. previously, I found when the door is closed, yes. now it's open for to allow aeration. Mm. You have uh, the sanitizers well placed. Mm. There are notices. Mm. You don't come here without a mask. Mm. There's a temperature the Gun, system gantry, ready yeah. for you to take your temperature. Mm. I, those are systematic but planned mm. engagements Indeed. to support government. Mm. It's our health and not government's health. Tadeo Atuhura is the communications and partnership manager at Madme Uganda. It is really imperative, my dear citizens, that you really do go and mm. clamor for these vaccinations. They will mm. actually give you more protection. But it doesn't mean that if you got vaccinated, you should actually throw a disregard when it mm. comes to adherence to the standard operating procedures. Please continue wearing your face mask. Mm. Continue adhering to the standard operating procedures, mm. one of which involves a social distancing of at least two to three meters. You'll still get reinfected, even though you did receive your COVID-19. In Jeb. Mm. Let's talk about the challenges that were ex exhibited or experienced by the uh, district caddy of Luero district, that is Sheikh Ramadan Molindwe. Mr. Molindwe, your yes. experience and challenges okay. working with members of the public, how are they or how did they receive the COVID 19 messages of hope? Uh, our people mm. uh, are, are taking uh, this yes. unseriously. Unseriously? Unseriously. Mm. Uh, total unseriously. How so? Because some of them they have seen their family members uh, dead because of the pandemic. At their villages they have seen people who have died because of the pandemic. There are those who have recovered uh, out of the pandemic. But also I think uh, as uh, leaders we should ask ourselves, what is stopping our people from going for vaccination? Have we done our part? Have we uh, sensitized our people to the ground? When you talk to them, what are their reasons for not clamoring for these vaccines? When you talk to them, you know, there is a lot of misinformation. And it is our role to go and uh, inform these people, mm. the right, to give them the right information about mm. the vaccines. Before about they show, the you told me there is an individual who called you by phone yesterday. I, yes, mm. he Let called me. me. When I got vaccinated, he called me, hey, Sheikh, I have put in my prayers. Whatever may come out, I pray for you. Mm. 
But again, I asked myself, why, 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 why this person is not informed? Mm. He said, eh, hey, for me, I fear that thing. Mm. And then I told him, you know, uh, you should go for the vaccination. I'm okay. I have no any side effect. I'm actually uh, becoming very healthy after taking my jab. Mm. So there is a lot of misinformation. People. Uh, what did they say? He said, uh, now I got confident. I got confident <laughs> that, uh, yeah, I, I'll go for the for vaccination. So he actually got confident mm -hmm. after, yeah, talking af to after, talking, after talking mm -hmm. to him that so and so and so, the medicine is very okay, the vaccine has no problem, you should go. So the problem is awareness. Right? Yeah, awareness. We need to, to carry on uh, this message to, to, the, to the ground. Mm -hmm. The chairman LC1, do your work as the chairman of the LC1. The imam, you are also uh, at the ground. Do your mm -hmm. message. Mm -hmm. Before actually uh, going to the, to mm -hmm. the pulpit, mm -hmm. uh, make sure that people they are uh, uh, observing the SOPs. Mm -hmm. The way they are sitting, have they washed their hands when they are entering? Like for the Muslim faith, we have set up uh, aside uh, the SOPs for the Muslim faith. Mm -hmm. His Eminence, the Mufti of Uganda, Sheikh Shaban Ramadan Mubaji, uh, through the Uganda Muslim Council structures, mm. we have set up SOPs that please come with the ablution. Mm. There is no jellycan at the mosque. Mm. There is no water at the mosque. Mm. Come with your ablution. Mm. The only water we have at the mosque, it is the uh, water for washing your hands mm. uh, with, with the liquid soap. Mm. So get your ablution from home, come to the mosque. Secondly, carry your mask. Carry your mask. Thirdly, come with the prayer mat. Because you never know who prayed at, uh, at, at 1 p.m. At that place, we are going to pray at 5 p.m., at, at 4 p.m. Mm. So we are trying to carry on the message and the awareness, but people seem to be not listening. Mm. Until one is, is, is a victim, uh, he, he, he will, uh, then he will he know, hey, you know, you people, I got COVID-19, but I don't know where I got it. So it is a collective responsibility, and to our people out there. Of course, it is a collective mm. responsibility, but then it is government that monopolized mm. the fight against COVID-19. They said, well, it's the district tax force that is going to be mandated with doing this. Don't you think it, that was uh, government shooting itself in the leg when they monopolized the fight against COVID-19? You know, they refused to involve people like yourself and other faith leaders. When they yes, continue Mr. to shut down yes. places of worship, that mm. could have been very, very good centers for disseminating this message. Uh, we, have find, we have found out as religious leaders why government programs fail at the ground. Why? Why they fail? Because we have the people. We meet these people five times a day. Indeed. We give them messages five times a day. Mm -hmm. When you don't involve us, we are the supervisors of what you have put on in place at the ground. Thank you. As religious leaders, we shall make sure that there is no corruption. Uh, being carried out at the ground. Indeed. Government has sent parish model money for development at mm -hmm. our parishes. Mm -hmm. As religious leaders, we are out of it. We have no say in it. But at least uh, we carry on the message that our people, Imam, you should go and ask, mm. has the money come yet? Mm. How are we going to benefit mm. as, Muslim, as Muslims uh, and our community? Mm. So we call upon the government, whenever it thinks of any program, Indeed. to bring on board everybody the religious leaders, uh, the politicians. You know, every time they bring the politicians first before us who have the number of the majority of the people. Indeed. A bishop has the entire diocese. They listen to him. Mm. Everybody listens to him. Even the district card, they listen to him because he is a faith leader. And the people, they see him uh, in, in the image of the God. Indeed. When he gives a word or a message, it is a message of God. Mm. So we call upon the government to engage us. The district task force, we are going to uh, also uh, contact with, uh, to get in, talk to, in contact with them mm. to say that at least every Friday they come at our headquarters to carry on a vaccination or a even program. Give messages yeah, or even give here. messages of hope. Mm. I have never seen a task force coming to our headquarters uh, to, 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 to seek uh, from, from, from the leaders mm. of the Muslim faith to, 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 to cut on the message. Indeed. Or even to give us messages of hope like Madme Uganda did. Indeed. They give us uh, stickers, uh, banners, you know, to cut on the, the awareness mm. and to send the message mm. to the ground. Mm. So, uh, I want to talk to our people out there that this life we have, it is a gift from God. Indeed. Life is a gift from God. We are lucky to share. And we should protect it and celebrate it for our loved ones. Mm -hmm. When you go out there, make sure that you, sh you social distance yourself. Because when you get the, 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 the virus, 
you will take it to your loved ones, the entire family. Mm -hmm. Wear your mask. Make sure you have your sanitizer mm -hmm. or you, you wash your hands uh, every after a few, few, few minutes so that you don't carry the, the virus to your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, while in our faith communities, we should welcome and celebrate the, uh, the people who have recovered from, our, from, from the COVID-19. Don't stigmatize them. A lot of people are being stigmatized at the ground. All right, we are going to take a break and return. Mm. We're on that queue of stigmatization mm. of people who have been grappling with COVID-19 because mm. you are one of those victims who yeah, grappled sure, with yeah. the disease, but you moved <laughs> through a part of the 96,727 mm. people who actually recovered from the mm. novel coronavirus disease. But over 5 million people have been unlucky. They died as a result of COVID-19. COVID-19 is one of the communicable diseases out there that is killing people with Ebola and also hepatitis A and B also taking center stage. Communicable diseases have claimed over 10 million people that is this very year and in total 49 million deaths have been registered this very year with Deo Atuhura is the communications and partnerships manager with Mount May Uganda. We are talking about how we can use faith leaders in imparting this message of COVID-19 messages of hope so that we can uh, achieve normalcy in that regard. Before we broke off, we were talking about stigmatization that is being meted out towards individuals who once were uh, infected with the disease and are now fully recovered, but communities are still discriminating against these individuals. We are still mm -hmm. continuing this conversation with Sheikh Ramadan Molindo. Sheikh Ramadan, the podium yeah. is yours. Continue where you stopped. Uh, yes, we are talking about social uh, stigmatization mm -hmm. of our people who have recovered from the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, stigma has caused a lot of repercussions. Mm -hmm. uh, when you stigmatize someone, one, such treatment negatively uh, affects those who are with the disease. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, some people have to say, you, you, you stay at home. Go and, sh and uh, sh social distance yourself. I've heard it has uh, even led to suicide. Yeah, you are still sick, even if he has recovered. You know, such uh, messages, <coughs> they keep these people uh, 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 to think that we are not worthy, you know, we had contaminated with the, with the, with the virus. It also affects their uh, caregivers, you know. Uh, someone has his wife. And then he comes, you know, I, I have been in the town, but they said I should come back, I'm still sick, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. So such, uh, uh, we should uh, carry on the message mm -hmm. to stop the stigmatization of those people who have recovered mm -hmm. from COVID-19. Even at our working places, you know, somebody says, hey, that one, that one, he, he got the COVID-19. But again, Don't he has recovered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we should be... Uh, uh, the people to 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 to, to stop mm. the discrimination of our people. Let them know that you can fully get recovered. Yeah, you can. I'm here. And not pass. I, I got COVID-19 uh, uh, virus. Yes. But I'm t today I'm here at NTV. Nobody is saying, "Hey, Sheikh was sick," and you know. Mm. So how long did it take you to recover? It took me uh, 14 days to recover, mm -hmm. and then I gave two myself weeks. another two weeks to stay home, mm. so that uh, my people get to know, yes, Sheikh is still <laughs> is okay. Mm. So uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, Stigma mm. uh, causes uh, also uh, uh, to to many people mm. uh, to fear the the, the, the disease, mm. also to fear to go for vaccinations because these people they, they they fear what is new. We always fear what is new. Uh, there is a COVID. It is something new. So you wait for your neighbor to yeah. go for the jab. Uh -huh. If they do not react, you also go. Yeah. So uh, when these people fully recovers, we should uh, feel free to okay. stay with them. But again. Uh, in the Holy Quran, mm. uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 195, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, mm. That do not throw yourselves into this destruction mm. by refraining. Break it down. Yeah, you know that, yes, there is a disease. It is killing, it has killed very many people, millions. Five million. Mm. We are like here in Uganda that the government and His Excellency the President uh, set up strong and strict guidelines mm -hmm. to the SOPs, mm. uh, to, the, to, to, the, to the community. Mm. And that's how we, we were saved from uh, the spread, the, 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 the rampant spread of the, the virus. Otherwise, it would be by, worse. The, by also that by the grace of God. But God says, do not throw yourself into destruction. When you know there is danger there, mm. why do you have to go there? Uh, why do you have to go there? Mm. So stop yourself. There's Save a burning yourself. building and you're entering it. Yeah. There is, a, there, is a, there is a fire where you are going. You know there is a fire and it can burn, burn you up. Don't go there. Please 
make sure that when I'm, go I'm going out, I have to be very careful. I have to carry on my mask. I have to have my sanitizer. I have to go and I do uh, social distance myself when I meet my colleagues. Secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in Surah Nisa, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 29, Allah says, Wala taqtulu amfusakum. Please do not and do not kill your lives, your selves. Do not kill your selves. How can I kill myself? When I know that there is a virus and the government has got the vaccinations, the vaccines, they are free of charge, they are available. And I, I, I keep a deaf ear. I stay at home. The vaccines are there at the health centers. Some they get expired. But again, I stay. Uh, at home without going for vaccination, mm -hmm. you have killed yourself. Because and your family, and your, family, and your fam entire uh, community. Because if you get uh, uh, the virus mm -hmm. uh, 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 from any for any time, mm -hmm. if you get the virus again, you will carry it to your families. Mm -hmm. You will kill yourself. So many people have died. Mm -hmm. So do not kill yourselves. Indeed, God to us is very loving and very caring. Mm. God is very caring and very loving to us. He gave us this life uh, to, 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 to celebrate it, to enjoy it in the right way. Mm. Uh, this is not the first time we have had uh, this kind of uh, pandemics and uh, uh, plague use. Uh, during the year of the 18, uh, that is the Hijrah, mm. uh, after the Prophet Salama traveled from Mecca to Medina, uh, in the 18th year, uh, we had uh, a plague called the, the Plague of Amwas. This plague, uh, almost 25,000 people died within that plague. Why? Mm. They died because they never listened to their leaders. They never listened to their leaders. They never uh, took it seriously uh, with the SOPs put, mm. put in place by their leaders. So this plague, mm. it happened. A lot of companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu including those who had memorized the entire Quran, almost mm. a third of them, mm. they died within that plague. Because of the plague? Yes. Mm. Leaders, uh, the commanders of the army, they died. Until when one commander, he was called Amr ibn al-As, mm. may, may peace be ple and blessings of Allah be upon him, he came, up with, he came up with an idea. But before coming up with an idea, the leader of the entire Muslims, yes, Sheikh. he came. His, he was called Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second caliph. Mm. He came to the borders of the Shami, because this is where the army was. And the plague started from the Palestine. Mm. It went to Shami, uh, Syria. So the leader at that time was uh, Amr ibn al-As in that area. But the leader of the entire Muslim community uh, in the world was called the second caliph, Umar ibn al-Khattab. Mm. Mm. When he came to the border, he met his uh, uh, servant there, that leader, uh, Umar ibn al-As. Mm. Amr ibn As told him that he, uh, sir, this is the ex his excellence, the president, trying to enter Ueru. Let's uh, let us give our people a, a, a simple mm. uh, 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 picture. His excellence, the president of Uganda, wants to come to Ueru, but at the gates of Ueru, he meets Dara this of Ueru. Dara this of, of Ueru says, "Your excellency, we have a plague in Ueru. Mm. God forbid, mm. we have a plague in Ueru. You cannot enter." But it's upon you if you want to enter or to turn back. Mm. As a leader, he said, you know, you people go back to your places and we are going back where we came from. Now, this leader, Amr ibn al-As, told his people, you people, we are the firewood to this pandemic. We are the firewood to this pandemic. Mm. If we don't listen to the government SOPs and guidelines, we are going to die all of us. Indeed. But if we listen, mm. we shall be okay. Mm. He gave them an idea that you people, you separate yourselves. Separate yourselves by going into the mountains, mm. in the forests, separate yourselves and live there mm. until the plague goes away. Indeed. And it went away when people listened to God, to God and uh, uh, everybody was back to his normal life. So this uh, COVID-19, it is here today. Mm. But together, if we fight together and uh, we stick to the guidelines and the SOPs put in place by the government, we shall defeat it all together. Sheikh uh, Mulindwa Ramadan, the District Kadi Follower District, drawing comparisons between the plague and this ongoing COVID-19 pandemic that is ravaging millions of individuals. Over 5 million people have been killed. Let me also bring in Tadeo Atuhura. Tadeo, mm. what lessons have been experienced in this COVID-19 engage engagement with the faith leaders like Sheikh um, Mulindwa? The very fundamental mm. Uh, lessons learned 
is that um, one of uh, engaging faith leaders mm. takes the message home. And two is that uh, the working together, everything is possible. Mm. But also fundamental listening. You see the uh, listening, not only to the faith leaders, mm. but also to your leaders uh, and sitting down and saying, where is the message coming from? Because you realize we're in an information age where you can get information from anywhere, Indeed. depending on whether it is relevant or irrelevant. But getting the information always uh, from the ministry, uh, this is what is happening for the vaccines where we have reached, it becomes quite very easy for us mm. to be able to implement the programs. Mm. But also very fundamentally is that if you follow the other guidelines, mm. you have washed your hands, you have um, the, uh, sanitized, you have kept social distance, mm. and still get the virus, and you have been vaccinated, science has showed that actually you don't uh, move to the severity stage. Mm. So it becomes very easy for you to survive. So that's one of the lessons that we've learned that we need to have our people mm. vaccinated. Indeed. So that has been quite um, something that has come out so well. But also want to applaud the, 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 the faith leaders Indeed. across that because they have been able to take up this message. And we are working together mm. so well in the I, I, in the, 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 the outreach mm. that we had in Luero under the leadership of um, the district caddy, mm. the DHO. Mm. Thank you so much, Dr. Innocent. Yeah. He was there, present, mm. and he passed on the message. Mm. He brought the team mm. uh, to do the vaccination. The mm. vaccination was done by the district team. And the, uh, I thank him for that message that he brought. Even the presence mm. of the leadership, mm. that was really Fun very amazing. outstanding. Yes. Now, I want to point out one thing. When yes, I w was seated within the tent, and uh, one person came and said, I am not a Muslim. Mm. <laughs> am I allowed to give the vaccine? <laughs> or oh, it's only for the, for, for for the, the Muslims. Muslims. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know that actually Sheikh. We are not ring fencing it for the Muslims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that Sheikh was near me. Yes. Uh, uh, he said, no, come. Come, mm -hmm. come actually. You join the line. Mm. So uh, it was not really not mm. for the Muslims, yeah. mm. but the entire community. Be because that, that's where I've been wanted to ask, because if I'm a member of the district task force, mm. I come to your mosque, uh, mm. Sheikh uh, Ramadan, mm. to, you know, disseminate this information. Mm. I'm not a Muslim, I'm a Christian, yeah. I'm a member of the district task force. Yeah. Would it be okay for me yeah. to come enter the mosque yeah. and talk to the Muslim faith? Mm -hmm. It is actually very okay. Mm. It is a collective responsibility that we all engage ourselves together. It's important to yeah. break the barriers. Yeah, I was very happy when that man came to me. <laughs> 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 you know, people think that when a government program is put in place yes. at, at a place, uh, like uh, at my village today, we, we have uh, a mass uh, vaccination yes. at the Church of Uganda. And uh, all the Muslims are going there. All Muslims are going there, and other local people there are in our community, mm. they are going there. So uh, it, mm. it is not about the Muslim community. If you, you see that they are vaccinating at a certain mm. worshipping place, mm. go there, please. Mm -hmm. Whether you are Muslim or not a Muslim. All right, we are back to you, Tadeo Atuhura. Mm. We did interrupt your submission. But then, mm. large and fur, as mild may Uganda, what are some of the challenges you've encountered while disseminating these messages of hope as far as COVID-19 is concerned? Yeah, th I think the, the largely we've been able to, 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 to sail through well mm. because of uh, partnerships mm. uh, with the Minister of Health. Minister of Health guides. Mm. We have the district task teams. They're able to guide us as well. Mm. We work together, the faith leaders. So it's been a smooth process. It's uh, not just a smooth process. Mm. I think it's a planned mm. process to ensure that you have a targeted result. Mm. Uh, the, 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 the other perspective, which is really at a lighter note, and mm. we understand because that is inconvenient, is about um, the lockdown. Of course, when you're in the lockdown, the faith leaders couldn't move uh, like they would move now yes. that they have been uh, released mm. and transport has sort of like been eased. Mm. Right now you can be able to reach so many other people uh, within the, pre uh, the worship centers as opposed to the previous um, the period. Mm. So that we needed to now use the alternative and good enough most of our faith leaders had platforms Mm. platforms that uh, they were using online, um, radio mm. programs mm. Uh, to be able to reach out to, to, to their uh, followers. Mm. So that in a way helped us to achieve 
uh, our engagement. Indeed. Uh, Tugura, besides the sensitization drive we are pushing right here on MTV Uganda, besides mm -hmm. the vac vaccination drives taking center stage, mm -hmm. artists' premises, the different mosques, and also the churches, mm -hmm. what other pl uh, plant activities are within the pipeline to ensure that more people clamor for these vaccinations? Yeah, the other activities that beyond the media engagements, mm -hmm. uh, we are also meeting with the carrying out sessions, orientation sessions of the communities, mm -hmm. more especially the faith leaders. Indeed. We met the imams and the county uh, county leaders, sheikhs. County mm. sheikhs. Mm. And uh, we're doing the same to the other denominations as I well, see. so that they can be able to go on with the message. Mm. But also the other aspect is that we have printed these messages, and uh, these messages are simplified in the language of the people, that they can understand. If I do not make it to the Moscow church, I could just read it off the internet. Yes, mm. you can read oh it yeah. off. But we also have WhatsApp platforms mm. for each of the leaders because um, the one of the things that we experienced, these questions that come up, mm. a sheikh could stand up to talk or an imam and they ask him questions mm. and he doesn't have the answer. Mm. So we put that platform where we keep on giving information about COVID-19. Mm. If they ask you this, mm. these are some of the sample questions mm. that you can have. So that information is out there. But we're also documenting this process mm. entirely to make sure that we have achieved mm. our, our, our set targets. Mm. The key fundamental thing, Romeo, is yes. that we need to have our people embrace this message. Indeed. They have the standard operating procedures, but also the faith leaders to be able to be exemplary. Mm. And uh, I'm so happy that uh, the w I, I'll tell you, when Sheikh got vac vaccinated mm. on Monday, mm. <laughs> all the followers, <laughs> and he showed, first of all, they were watching the process. Mm. Mm. So when he got vaccinated, and he mentioned takbir, mm. all of them <laughs> collapsed. <laughs> and they I were struck, and now they were now saying, can mm. we also get, yeah. you, you see? Mm. And, and the same has happened with the other okay. um, the faith leaders. So I, it's very important that we appreciate what the faith leaders are doing, mm. and we're working together to ensure that actually, through the COVID-19 messages of hope, mm. that we have a contribution towards fighting COVID-19. And, and to that effect, how long will the COVID-19 messages of hope take? Yeah, the COVID-19 messages of hope, as a program, it moves on for about uh, the four mm. months. But we know that the faith leaders, mm. meeting people every day is mm. part of their day-to-day -day duty. Yeah. Mm. Every Friday, there will be Juma prayers mm. across. So where we are not, they are yeah. there. Mm. Uh, every Sunday, there is mass, there mm. is service. There is so these efforts cannot stop. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they must be able to continue. And they also, the same happens with our media platforms. Mm. This messaging has to continue because continuously, there is that lost ship that we need to yeah. convince finally mm. and bring them on board. Mm. Because we know everyone, everyone matters. And like uh, what Sheikh has said, our campaign is concentrated within the uh, Mobende region mm. where we're working under the accelerating epidemic control. Mm. Because you know, one of the things that we've heard as well is that we want to sustain the gains that we have achieved in the fight against um, the HIV AIDS. Mm. Mm. So when the COVID-19 came in, mm. there was also an effect in terms of uh, b how even the management is for the HIV AIDS care. Mm. So in that, we want to make sure that all the indicators that we have set are actually achieved. Indeed. And we thank ministry again for mm. ensuring that they are not only looking at COVID-19, mm. they are also prioritizing the other areas as well. Mm. Together with uh, the, 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 the team that supports mm. us, uh, PEPFA and CDC, mm. to ensure that this actually continues. Indeed. And we are so proud of that. Let's talk about the Muslim community as a whole this mm. time around, Sheikh Ramadan Mulindu. Um, mm. How have they been able to prevent the spread of COVID-19 within Luero, the Muslim community? Mm -hmm. uh, the Muslim community mm. uh, are, are very responsive to the uh, to the message mm. of uh, avoiding COVID-19 uh, effects. Mm. Mm. Uh, we have carried on the message through our WhatsApp groups. Mm. Uh, I'm telling you as a district, that I have my WhatsApp group with my county sheikhs. <laughs> I need to join that WhatsApp group. <laughs> <laughs> you are most welcome. Where I give uh, uh, my message yes. uh, of hope. Uh, to be disseminated to our people mm. down there. Mm. But uh, uh, as we finalize, I want to talk about uh, the misinformation. Yes. Uh, our people do uh, spread fear instead of facts. Mm. That somebody uh, has never vaccinated, that somebody has never uh, got uh, a virus, but is spreading fear 
to our people uh, that you know when you go and do this you will get a uh, uh, yeah f you know uh, blood clots and what of you so what I, I want to, to, to appeal to our communities please spread uh, facts mm. spread the facts don't spread fear uh, we should fight the misinformation by spreading the right and the credible information to our people. Indeed. Our people, when they receive this message, you know, they got, it, it, it spreads uh, v very easily to others, mm. which has uh, made our people not to, to trust the drugs and the vaccines mm. to go for vaccinations. So let us spread the right information. If you don't know something, don't say it. And let's mm. keep quiet. Yeah, and let's keep quiet. It is not a crime that you mm. should go on uh, talking here and there. Mm. Uh, also, uh, uh, we should also check the facts mm. before we are acting and sharing to others. Mm. Uh, is it a fact that people, they get blood clot? Is I have not I have not got a blood clot uh, myself. Yesterday I was vaccinated with mm. AstraZeneca. Mm. And people have a lot of uh, hearsays mm. that AstraZeneca has such and such effects yes, and that this uh, PCV has this and that. Please go for vaccinations. We shall die if we don't go for vaccinations. All right, vaccinations. thank you very much, Sheikh yeah. Ramadan Molindwe. Please, maximum adherence to the standard operating procedures mm -hmm. is the message we are disseminating yeah. right here. And also, mm -hmm. uh, for the individuals of this country to actually clamor for the vaccinations mm -hmm. that are actually taking center stage right now within the country. If we do not do that, more people are going to be subjected to body bags. They'll die and be part of the statistics, part of the 5 million people who have mm -hmm. succumbed to COVID-19. Let's use the last remaining mm -hmm. Yes, seconds, and talk to Atuhura. Yes, Mald me. Mald me. Mald me. Mm. The, the, as mild me as institution. Final, final communicate from Yes, at our hospital, we're doing vaccination. Indeed. We're also doing uh, testing for COVID-19. Mm. So you can just walk in at the Center of Excellence in no, Loeza and get tested for COVID-19. Mm. And then also uh, get vaccinated in partnership with Wakiso District. Amazing. And a uh, great appreciation to Wakiso District mm. team mm. for having really championed this. That um, uh, uh, up till uh, by to date, mm. we have vaccinated over 4,000 mm -hmm. um, people at our facility. Mm. And it's a facility that is 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You can come in. We vaccinate on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Free Friday. Free of charge. Free of charge. That's starting great at news. 8 up to mm. uh, uh, 2 p.m. Mm. We do that vaccination. And also alongside the other services, mm. of course, you can be able to access mm. our other services. Uh, Romy, you have not come to Malme. I have to come. <laughs> please, please, please you, need visit. To, <laughs> you need to come and visit us <laughs> as well. Yes. And then you mm. can also be able to see the other mm. services that mm. we have. Mm. Yeah, training the people to become uh, health workers. Mm. We have the Malme Institute of Health Sciences. Mm. So you can still come and, uh, and pay a visit. Uh, I, I also believe we should organize a people's parliament within the jurisdiction of Luero. Yeah. <laughs> 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 when we talk about some of the contests stations coming in from the public as to why they are not clamoring for these vaccinations that we can demystify mm. all that misinformation that has befallen this nation exactly mm. we should be mm. able to think about that Indeed. but the last thing is that uh, as Ugandans yes, we need to come and really embrace vaccination I hear you on that one it is something that we pray to God about mm. God has given us the vaccine mm. God has given us the opportunity to take the vaccine mm. let's use this mm. chance and let's follow the guidelines. COVID-19 does not move by itself. Mm. It's us who move it. Sheikh Mulindwe, before I let you go, you do have individuals who say, ah, for me, mm. I pray mm. so much, I mm. do not need a face mask. Mm. I'm a Muslim, I do not need a face mask, mm. as long as I pray. Mm. You have Christians also who say, hi, I have my God. He's protecting me. I do not <laughs> need a face mask. I do not need to social distance. Mm. Let them know that they'll succumb. They'll get infected. God is protecting all of us, mm. not uh, uh, certain individuals. All God helps those who help Yeah, themselves. and he's watching all of us. Mm. So uh, I want to tell our people out there, mainly those in Ruero, Indeed. that as Ruero, as Ruero district, uh, local government, we received 100,000 uh, vaccines. Mm. Go for vaccination. As Ugandans, we have defeated so many uh, epidemics and pandemics. We have defeated the Ebola. We should join ourselves and we defeat the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much, Sheikh Molindwa Ramadan. He is the district cardi follower of district. Beautiful people in the, within that jurisdiction. We shall be visiting you and expect that a people's parliament. Mm. And also, at a, that is Tadeo Atuhura, the communications and partnership manager with Madme Uganda. Gentlemen, thank you very much for having made the You're time to speak to our beautiful viewers on this subject. You're You're welcome. Welcome.